Hello and welcome to Intech Centre's Functional Skills Tutorial. My name is Kerry ann and I will be guiding you through the Functional Skills Mathematics Sample Paper for Level 2, provided by City and Gills. Please note that this video is made for educational purposes only, for Intech Centre's customers and learners, and in no way is this affiliated with City and Gills, and we cannot guarantee that the answers given are 100% correct. Please also note that there are different ways which you can answer the steps and questions in the exam and that this is only a guide. If you have any queries, complaints or feedback on this video, please email us at info at intechcentre.com. Intech Centre is one of the leading training providers based in Islington, London. And to start, I will give you a brief outline of the courses and facilities available. So we offer government funded courses in English and Maths, both starting at entry level 3, going up to level 1 and level 2. We also offer for IT for beginners, IT level 1 and IT level 2 as well as employability. If you are interested in any of these courses, please click on the relevant link to get more information. If for some reason you do not fulfil the eligibility requirements, we also offer Maths, English and IT as private courses. So as this is a maths tutorial, I will give you some information about the maths funded course. I mean, sorry, the maths private course. So the private course costs £150 and you get access to the learning for two months on a computer system. It includes the examinations as well as the learning and please note that this includes all three levels of entry level three, level one and level two and not just one. If you do not want to do the course privately you may also do the exams by themselves. So we offer a level two exam in English and a level two exam in maths. To sit just the maths exam it will cost £90 in cash. The exam will take up to two hours and your results will be back within 27 working days of you completing the exam. And if successful, your certificate will arrive within two weeks after that. If you are interested in any of the courses available at Intech Centre, you can inquire now and an advisor will get back to you within a couple of working days. Or you can ring the centre on 020 7354 to get any extra information. So... For the private exams, we offer exam preparation to help you prepare to sit your exam. And today I will be looking at sample 3 and doing a tutorial guiding us through that. So in the actual exam, an individual key code will have to be entered. However, as this is a tutorial, we can just press OK. Again, in the exam, your details will come up in this box and it is your responsibility to confirm that these are correct. But as this is a demo, we can just press confirm, which will take us to the beginning of the exam. So here it tells us that we've got two hours to sit the exam and there is instructions that you must read carefully before starting the exam. There is a calculator in the exam to help you work out any answers and you can also watch a tutorial to show you how to answer the exam online. Once you are ready, you can click start exam and the time will start. So for this paper, scenario one is about stargazing and there are 25 marks available for this task. You should check all your work as you go along. So the introduction to this task tells us that it is about attending a stargazing event and a stargazing event is an activity where people meet together to observe the stars. To complete this task, you will need to work out the cost for three different events, choose one of the events, Summarise your results in a table and you will need to check your calculations and review your work. So we will click next to start with the first question. So question 1A is worth 6 marks and it tells us that we decide to go to a stargazing event with friends and there are 12 people in this group. There are 3 possible events to choose from and the costs for each event are shown below. So we must work out the cost for each event for the group. So we will start with Leo's event, which tells us that it costs £64 for every four people to attend this event. As there is 12 people in the group, we will multiply this by 3 to find the cost to cover 12 people. And we can use the calculator to help us with this calculation. So 64 multiplied by 3 gives us £192. 
for 12 people. However, it also states that there is 15% off for groups over 18 eight people, so we must find what 15% discount would be. To do this, we will do 192 divided by 100, which will give us what 1% equals, which is £1.92. We will then multiply this by 15 to find what 15% represents which is £28.80. As this is a 15% discount, we must deduct this from the total cost to find the cost included in the discount. So we will do £192 minus £28.20, which leaves us with £163.80, which will be the total cost for Leo's event, which will pop in the given box below. Now we must find the cost of Orion's event and we know that this costs £144 for 6 people as there is 12 of us we will multiply this by 2. So 144 times 2 gives us £288. We also know that you get one eighth of this price for this month only. So we must deduct this from the total price. So to find one eighth we will do 288 divided by 8 which gives us 36 and again as this is a discount we must deduct this from the total price which leaves us with £252 so it will cost £252 for Orient's event. Finally we will work out the cost for Corpius's event and we know that this is £18 per person for groups over six which applies to us as there are 12 people in our group. So we will do 18 multiplied by 12 to find the total cost, which is £216. We also know for this event, if you buy five tickets, you get one free. Therefore, every sixth ticket is free. As there are 12 of us, this will be two tickets for this group. So we will do two times 18 to find out what this is worth. which is £36, so we will get a £36 reduction in price. So we will do 216 minus 36, which leaves us with £180 for corpses event. And question 1A is now complete. It says here to make a note of your answers, as you will need these to follow through with the questions, and writing them down will save you from flicking between questions. So question 1B, which is worth three marks, tells us that we have to pay a deposit for the group's attendance at the event, and we will pay the remaining balance later. The table shows us the deposits for the event, and we must look at our answers in question 1A and work out the deposits we will need to pay for each event. So in 1A, we worked out that Leo's event would cost £163.20. And we know the deposit for this event is 12.5%. So to find this, we will divide by 100. Which is 1.632. We will then multiply this by 12.5 to find out what 12.5% represents. Which is... £20.40. and 40 pence. So the deposit for Leo's event will be £20.40. Next we will find the deposit for Orion's event, which we know costs £252. Orion's deposit is 10%, so to find this we will divide by 100 to give us what 1% is worth, which is 2.52, and then we will multiply this by 10 to get what 10% represents, which is £25.20. £20. So that will be the cost of the deposit for Orion's event. Finally, we will find the cost for Corpus's event, which is 25%. So we know that Corpus's event costs £180. So to find 25% of this, we will divide by 100 which is 1.8, and then multiply by 25, 
which is £45. So we know that Corpus' event was £45. Question 1c, which is worth one mark, tells us to choose one of the events to attend and explain why we chose this event. So looking at the costs for all the events, it is clear to see that Leo's event is the cheapest. So I will pick Leo's event and my explanation will be because it is the cheapest event, which will give me the one mark in the exam. Question 1D, which holds two marks, tells us that the balance must be paid four weeks before the event, and we must work out the balance for this event and the latest date it must be paid. So we know that Leo's event is the 24th of May, and it must be paid four weeks before this, so we will count back four weeks. So one week would be the 17th, two weeks would be the 10th, three weeks would be the 3rd, and then a week from the 3rd would leave us to the 26th of April. So we know that the remaining balance must be paid by the 26th of April and we must now find out what the remaining balance is. So we know that the event costs £163.20 in total and we know that the deposit is £20.40 so we must deduct this to give us what the remaining balance is. which leaves us with £142.80 as the remaining balance. And this question is now complete. So 1E tells us that there are 12 people in the group and we need to split the cost equally between each person in the group. We need to look at our answers from question 1b and 1d and work out the amount that each person must pay for the deposit and the balance. So starting with the deposit, which we know is £20.40 for the group, there are 12 people in the group, so we will divide this by 12 to find the deposit per person. So £20.40 divided by 12 leaves us with £1.70 deposit per person. And the balance for the group, so we've got £142.80 remaining balance. So we will divide this by 12 to find the balance per person. Which leaves us with £11.90 per person left to pay. So it tells us here as a reminder again to make a note of all of our answers as we will need them in question 2. And we must complete question 1F first, which is worth 2 marks. So this is asking us to check one of our calculations in question 1D or 1E, and we must use a different method to the one that we used originally. So the calculation I'm going to check is from question 1E, and it is the one highlighted. So to check this, I must do a different method, so I am going to do a reverse calculation to double check my answer. So I will do 11.90 multiplied by 12 in hope that gives me an answer of 142.80. But we will check that on the calculator. So 11.90 by 12 is 142.80, therefore I know that my method was correct. So now question one is complete. Remember to make a note of all your answers for question two. So question two is worth five marks and it tells us that we need to let the rest of the group know about the costs and the dates for the event. We must make a summary table to show the total cost for the whole group and for each person. And this must include the deposits, the balances and the dates. So when doing a table, make sure that all of the information is put in very clearly and you have put in everything that the question asks. So the question asks us for the total cost, the deposit, the remaining balance, and the due date. And we must do this for the group and also per person. So now we just have to put in all the information we've got from the previous question. So we know the total cost of the event is £163.40. 
20. We know the deposit is 20 pounds 40. We know the remaining balance is 142.80, and we know that this must be paid by the 26th of April. And per person, which is all of these divided by 12, we know that the total cost is 1360. We know that the deposit is £1.70. And we know that the remaining balance is £11.90. Oops. Just put that in the right box. And again, we know the due date is the same, which is the 26th of April. So that is question two complete. Make sure your table is out very clearly and it includes all of the things given in the question. So question three tells us that we were asked to work out the cost of three different events, to choose one of the events and to summarise your table in the results. And we now need to think about how well we did in this task. So we must make a comment about three of the following and the comments must be about what you did in the task. So you must think about any information that you would have liked, how sensible your answers were, how well your methods worked, anything you found difficult, and things you might do differently when tackling a similar problem. So the answers to these questions will differ depending on each individual's experience, but I will give you some examples of answers that would be appropriate. So for example, we could have said that I would have like to know what the chances of seeing the stars were for each site in order to pick the most appropriate event. Another comment may be that the results are sensible because 1360 per person seems reasonable. And a final example of a comment would be that my methods worked well because the individual amounts were consistent with the group tolls. So there's three examples on comments that you could give that would gain you the marks in the exam. However, it will depend depending on what you found difficult in the exam, which is always make sure you link it back to the question. So that is the end of scenario one. Thank you for listening and scenario two will be covered in the next video. Thank you.